me tell you where, uh, where my involvement is. What we have done is, as a chemist, we look at the hydrogen atom and we wanted to see the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy of the hydrogen atom. Should the electron come close to the nucleus, right, you need to see an upfield shift in the resonance. And we wanted to see experimentally, do we see this or not? Under what conditions do we see? So we have prepared an extensive report and put it out in the literature. And I ask people, tell me if I'm wrong. This is exactly what I have done. This is the NMR that I get. We have independently done this. Now, I have not heard a single person telling, Shari, there is something wrong here. Not a single person, because we gave all the experimental procedures. The way I followed this is, just like I write my paper, research paper, right? This is what I did. This is what I see. This is what I believe it could be attributed to. That is the route that I have taken. I have not gotten a single email. So, in a way, it's people, uh, you know, have to believe this. Yes. Any, any term being coined for the new radius of the electron orbit? The original was Bohr's radius? Could it be maybe <laughs> Mill's radius? Right. In fact, Bohr's radius was also killed by Heisenberg, I believe. Heisenberg did not like that idea of fixed radius, right? So, this has to be a different, maybe we should call Randy Mill's radius. <laughs> Mill's radius. Yes, sir. The process of changing that radius. How does the hydrogen change its orbit, so to speak, around the nucleus? It's kind of. This is quite yeah, really good. Yeah. So the. Uh, yeah. So uh, how does the orbit change with an excited state? So the excited. What's that? Heat. Well, it absorbs a photon of a discrete uh, energy. That the difference between the state it was in and the state it arrives at transitions to. So the, uh, the excited state is an electron, a photon, and a proton. And current theory just treats it purely mathematically. It doesn't say where the photon is or what the electron looks like or what the photon looks like. But this, if you do it classically and actually solve what the electron is, it actually is like re it's a resonator cavity. And uh, it, it's a dynamic resonator cavity. It has discrete frequencies of excitation. An excited state is electron, photon, and proton. And you can solve all those. And the photon has, uh, is, a, is like a packet of electromagnetic field. And you can solve exactly what it is and all its characteristics and the double slit and everything about it. And it has uh, in E and B fields, according to classical electrodynamics, you have angular momentum. It's, called R, it's calculated by the R cross E cross B conjugate. It turns out to be H bar for the photon. And uh, that H bar is, uh, is conserved when the electron goes from one state to another state. And that photon carries uh, electric field, and that electric field superimposes the proton's electric field. So the electron in the n is one state sees a field of an integer of e, e plus. But when it absorbs a photon, the resultant field is uh, reciprocal integer times e plus. That is, the photon's electric field adds to the proton's electric field, and the resultant electric field at the electron is reciprocal integer. That comes out of Maxwell's equation, so the field can be a half, a third, a fourth, a fifth all the way up to one, zero in the ionized state where the photon identically cancels the proton's field and, uh, and the electron moves further away and has a higher energy and the h bar omega of energy uh, is equal to the energy of that transition. And the mega change of the electron's angular velocity equals the mega of the h bar omega and, uh, and you can serve, as I said, angular momentum. But the photon, because it's reciprocal integer radial field, it produces an instability a, a radiative dipole at the uh, electron, and that's unstable, the radiation, so it will decay back, the photon will be released, and, uh, and uh, it will go back to the original n as one state. But in the case of a hydrino state, the hydrinos are again an electron, a photon, and a proton, but rather than the field, uh, uh, the photon field adding to the proton field and decreasing it, it adds to the proton field and increases it by an integer. That's why you have to take away 27.2 because if you make the field go from 1 to 2, the potential energy changes by 27.2. Thereby, an acceptor has to accept that amount of energy to conserve energy. So you can have the field increased by an integer. The uh, electron will then be pulled radially uh, and uh, achieve a uh, minimum energy at a reciprocal integer, the original hydrogen radius, and that has an integer field interacting with an integer charge, fundamental charge electron, and that is stable to radiation. So a hydrino state is an electron, a photon, and a proton. 
The way it gets that state is you transfer energy out, the field becomes stronger, the electron goes close to the proton and it's stable. Conversely, in excited state, energy comes in, the field is decreased and the electron goes to a further away from the proton and with enough cancellation of the field it becomes completely ionized. And you can actually calculate, from the, again this is classical to just give you an idea how this works. So if you have the current, if you have the electron as a current and it's going from radius one Bohr radius to say two Bohr radius, so it's going uh, radially further away, it's obviously moving going from state one to state two, which current theory doesn't deal with. They say it's instantaneous, it's not. So you have a radial current and you can calculate from a current, you have a vector potential, you take the curl of A, you get the B field, you take the curl of B, you got the E field, E cross B is the, uh, is the uh, E cross B conjugate is the power. You divide the power into the energy, H bar omega, and that gives you the state lifetime. So you take the reciprocal, you got the Einstein A coefficients. As a function of fundamental uh, constants and the integer initial final state, you plug in the initial final state, it gives you all Einstein A coefficients and matches all the NIST Einstein A coefficients. And that was that one graph that you had in the red? Now that was the rotation vibrational uh, prediction for the hydrino. So those were, those were the P, Q, and R branch of rotation of H214. But I'm saying you can do very, very fundamental calculations that are unfathomable. You can't do that with current theory. It has the electron going faster in the speed of light. You get these huge hypergeometric series and just it's in, it takes years. One PhD, uh, PhD uh, grad student will spend his whole entire career doing just one calculation. And they don't even make sense physically. They're totally nonsensical, faster than light speed and things like that. This is an integer formula. It gets all of them. Just plug in the integers. And it's like that for everything. Molecules, uh, uh, atomic excited states. You can solve them in exact analytical expression, integers only. Because it's a physical theory, it gives you a physical result. But you want to know how it does it? It transfers energy out. The photons created inside that resonator cavity increases the field, the electrons pull closer to the proton, and it's stable. And why it's, radi why it's moving radially, you get the continuum radiation. So you have, a, you have a resonant energy transfer, that creates the photon, that increases the field by an integer, then the electron radiates by moving, accelerating closer to the proton, and that's why we get the continuum radiation. It's not a resonant. Uh, it's not a resonant excitation like it is in an excited state. It's an energy transfer and then a radial uh, collapse of the radius and that emits continuum radiation.